My mom was married seven times and taught us that you never left anyone. No matter if they were horrible to you, took all your money and treated your kids like garbage. What did your parents teach you that you had to unlearn? My mother is convinced all clothes are too tight unless they are falling off you. I looked like a ragamuffin for years until my rich sister-in-law pulled me aside. She told me, sweetie. I'm gonna take you shopping before you ever have to attend any job interviews looking like that. Old-fashioned Southern racism. When I was old enough to really think about it, I knew it was wrong. Couldn't say anything against it because I would have been ostracized, and heaven forbid if I had dated a black woman. I would have been disowned by my entire family. Korean fan death. For those who don't know about this, Korean people believe that if you sleep with a fan on with all windows, and doors closed you will die. Still can't convince my parents that this is a myth. My mother is the anti-vaxxer, Kony 2012, chemtrails type person. I believed every lie she told me, and of course I told everyone at school this info. It gained me a reputation as the weird kid, and nobody believed me for a long time. That the garbage disposal will not trigger a nuclear reaction, and blow up half the world within 5 seconds of being turned on without cold water running. That was a tough one to unlearn. My mom is obsessively clean. It took me a couple years into my marriage to stop cleaning to her standards. I am not a dirty person, but I don't have a fit about a little dust on the baseboards. She should see my carpet right now. I've been sewing. There are scraps and threads all over. She'd twitch. Cooking chicken. Until college, I thought that chicken was supposed to be dry. I hated it. My buddy cooked me chicken parmesan and it was the best chicken I ever had. When I was growing up, my parents had a list of things they thought I should do to become a man. They'd warn me that I would never get a wife if I was a picky eater, couldn't fix a car, or didn't know how to do manly things. I gave it my best effort to improve their ideals, but in the end I found that it didn't matter. While having those qualities were helpful in life, I found that they really didn't matter in a relationship. I was able to find a great girlfriend who accepted me for who I am. She even lets me keep my rubber duckies in the bed with us at night. They taught me to never disagree with anything. In my household there was no such thing as, no, or, why. Edit, I'm glad a lot of you are starting to be able to get over this bad programming, and speak up if you disagree with something. Most parents want the best for you and they do try their best but they don't get everything right. I do not have to say sorry for everything, I used to say, I'm sorry, for everything. Reached for the same cookie? Sorry. We had different opinions and you're frustrated? Sorry. Didn't grab the right bag of groceries out of the truck? Sorry. I said sorry for everything, even when cashiers didn't have nickels to give me back at change, I apologized for me causing them that inconvenience. Unlearning that is still a struggle at times. My good Christian mother told me that only black people and poor women breastfed. This was very confusing. She said the formula was good enough for her mother to give her and so it was good enough to give my sister and me. Okay. No questions asked. So when I grew up, and started having friends with kids, I saw how beautiful that gift was. When I got pregnant the first time, she pulled that dumb wisdom out again. So I asked her if Mary gave formula to Jesus, and more importantly, where did Joseph find a corner store open on Christmas, and she shut up. I breastfed all three of my kids like a champ and she never said a word. That anger doesn't have to be the default reaction to anything you don't like. Someone has a different opinion? They're telling you you're wrong, and stupid and you should be pissed. Someone made an offhand comment that struck you the wrong way. They're assholes. You should be pissed. Anything, anytime, anywhere happen that you didn't like for any reason? Be pissed. No thanks, it makes for a crappy life. Edit, wow you guys. I'm glad that this is something positive for everyone, and a lot of people have asked how to do this, for themselves or others. So instead of trying to reply to everyone, I'll give the short answer here. 
First, realize that being angry at everything is going to make life pretty horrible. Then, it's just reminding yourself every time you have that gut reaction to ask yourself if it's worth it or not. Nine times out of ten, it's not. If it's situational, try and make the best of it as best you can, depending on the situation, obviously. If it's personal, try to see the other person's perspective. If they're just being an asshole, think of something you're going to enjoy doing later, smile, and wish them a great day while you go about your day, because assholes aren't worth your emotional effort of being angry. Quantity over quality. Though my family was economically stable, privileged even, my parents grew up in poverty. So their way of buying was to buy cheap. Which definitely should be taken into consideration but ultimately, if the quality is not there you end up spending more to continuously replace the item. We could afford to buy things of better quality that would last longer, but that's just not how they grew up. It still hurts me to spill $60 on a nice pair of shoes that will last more than a year. I have since learned that, I would much rather spend this $60 one time, rather than getting three pairs of $20 crappy no-brand shoes that hurt my feet and fall apart every few months. That you should never do anything for others because nobody will do anything for you. I understand because my mom came from a very rough household growing up, but it was frustrating whenever she found out I bought lunch for my friends, or gave someone a ride. It would always be that nobody will look out for you, why do the same? My dad thought it was funny to teach my sister, brother and I the wrong names to things. Sister confuses plates and bowls. Brother confuses forks and spoons. I get confused with beetroot and capsicum. I get it right most of the time now. Edit, I haven't seen dogtooth, never heard of it until today, yes I'm Aussie. Dad wasn't abusive, it was a funny prank on his children. I still love him. My mother told me I had another middle name one day. Aloysius. I hated it, of course, but eventually came to terms with the idea. It was years later that she realized I had been writing an extra middle name on literally everything that required my full name, and asked me why I was doing such an odd thing. She had forgotten what she had done. When I told her she laughed at me for about an hour straight, tears rolling down her face laughing so hard she peed herself. Yeah, thanks. She taught me capsicum seeds were poisonous. They aren't. She really believes this one though. A bunch of other stupid stuff. Edit, half of it to troll me, the rest because she believes weird stuff. Yeah, I misspelled the name. You should have seen how I spelled it when I was seven. My mom taught me that I had to respect my elders even if they were possibly wrong because they were older and wiser. My dad on the other hand sat me down one day and said, son, people are stupid, just because they are older doesn't mean they know anything better from apple butter. I don't care how old they are, if they don't know their ass from a hole in the ground it's okay to call them a dumbass. You're going to run into people who are smarter than you, but you're also going to run into people who will make you wonder just how in the hell they manage to not drown themselves while taking a piss in the morning. You can know a lot or you can know a little, a smart man knows that he doesn't know everything, he also knows the value of common sense. To be a bystander, for lack of a better term. My parents are very against me standing up for others, and even myself in some cases, and I had to learn that standing up for other people is the right thing to do. Also how to pronounce cucumbers. All the times she'd call me a spoiled bitch when I cried, because we were eating ramen every night, and I had no clothes to wear to school. Then problems with my lungs because the house we were in had black mold, but we could somehow magically afford $60 to $80 of liquor for her boyfriend every week. That's something I am still unlearning. Edit, guess I wasn't clear enough. The bit I'm unlearning is that it's okay to voice your unhappiness, you are not spoiled for wanting decent living conditions. It's okay to accept gifts, help from other people, it does not make you a bad person and does not mean you are using them. That you don't have to marry everyone one you date. My mom was married seven times and taught us that you never left anyone. 
No matter if they were horrible to you, took all your money and treated your kids like garbage. And that you could fix them if you married them. It took me moving out and talking with other people that that is not normal and people break up all the time. Luckily I never married any of those guys. Like and subscribe, for more funny, interesting, and scary r slash ask reddit videos.